Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of AEW Weekly Wrap-Up. I'm your host, Ethan Black. Today we're going to talk about for this week in AEW, and also I'll run down the previews for Saturday's Rampage, and next week's shows, along with some Ring of Honor like usual. And, but before we get to the Dynamite review, I'm just going to run down the Rampage last week's episode from Baltimore. Since there's no more Dark and Dark Elevation, figure I'll start doing that. And then possibly the Collision show, whatever that's going to be, so bear with me here. So the trios match, we had El Hidro, the Vikingo team with the Ring of World Tag Teams, Lucha Brothers, Pentagon Jr., and Ray Phoenix. Defeating QTV, that's Aaron Solo, Powerhouse, Austin, QT, Marshall, 12 minutes and 25 seconds. Not entirely much with TBS, which team, Jake Argill. Defeating GS God in 38 seconds. Mark Briscoe defeat Preston Fans, 11 minutes 56 seconds. And the Maven and the Firm Deletion. The Hardys, Matt and Jeff, Tina Wolf, Isaiah Cassidy, and the FTW champion Hook. Defeating the firm's Big Bill, Ethan Page, Lee Moriarty, and Stokely Hathaway. TV time was 13 minutes and 38 seconds. Honestly, that rampage was actually pretty good. I say check out all... I would skip the T, the Jay Cargo match, but then I watched the rest of it. But that was last week's rampage, so we'll go right into uh, Dynamite. So before... The, so this is from Detroit, Michigan, Little Caesars Arena. So before the show, there was two dark... Apparently that they filmed these matches. I don't know what they're doing with them. But the two dark matches were Sky Blue and Will Nine Good V Marine Stream, Nile Rose and Tag Team Mansion, and Ethan Page and Preston Fans V Aaron Sullivan and QT Marshall, a QTV and Tag Team Mansion. But we'll just get started with Dynamite Review. So this is a double Jeopardy match. Ring of War World Jam Club Castanoli going with Ring of War World Tag Team Jam Ray Phoenix. So basically, the winner gets a shot at the loser's title. So Claudio wins, he gets shot at the tag title. Ray Phoenix wins, he gets shot at the world title. So match starts with both men going back and forth till Claudio Costanelli catches Ray Phoenix off the ropes into a beautiful backbreaker. Phoenix comes back with a dive and hurt run off the rope followed by, followed by two back-to-back toe base of Claudio on the outside. He tries to go for a third one, but Costanelli catches him and drops him onto the barricade. Claudio goes climbing on the stairs with Phoenix in a suplex position, but ends up dropping him into the crowd instead. That was actually a cool spot. Phoenix runs the barricade into a hurt run to Claudio, then back inside. Claudio catches Phoenix with Death Valley driver that only got a two count. Claudio puts Phoenix on his shoulders and climbs the tower, but Phoenix fights back and hits a hurricane for a two count. They take it to the outside. They go across Claston only press on his face right into the crowd as we cut the pitcher and pitcher. After the pitcher and pitcher break, Claston only hits a gut wrench suplex to Phoenix off the middle for a two count. Then he starts hitting each other hard strikes and chops before Phoenix lands a thrust kick, kick in the corner, and a rolling cutter that got a two count. Claston only goes to the outside for a breather, but he got hit by a Phoenix top of moonsault. They go back and forth for a bit till Phoenix gets a cold red for a two count. Classy only comes up with a water slide for his own two count. Goes right into the arm and hits our hammer and hammer and anvil elbows. And then the recall a bomb for the victory at 14 minutes and 28 seconds. Excellent opener. I give this one 8 out of 10. Since Claudio won, he gets to pick a partner. I imagine I'll probably with Yuta for a shot at the Ring World World Tag Team titles. Then we go backstage, we see... Uh, some legs walking by. We don't know who it was. It's the return Miro. Once the camera pans up, Renee try to get a word with him, but he just walks right past her, goes into the Tony Khan's office. So during the show, we got a video package of the four pillars. So we start off with the world champion MJF, where he tells us what the four pillars compares him to the Beatles. So Sammy Guevara is Ringo, Jungle Boy Jack Perry is George, Darby Allen is John, and MJF is Paul. Before NJ starts listing his accomplishments and name drops people he beat, such as CM Punk and Cody Rhodes, he says every great moment in this sport has generation talent, and that is MJ and his reign there has begun. It's a close hit part. Then we go, to, we see the AW World Tag Teams FTR come down to the ring, and, F, and Dax Horace are saying they will mark Briscoe an apology and ask him to come out, but instead we hear the music of Jay Lethal and Jeff Jared. So them, along with Sanjay and Sadam Singh, come out. Sanjay says that FTR have one job today and that's to accept the challenge. D- Dax asked the crowd if they want them to accept it, and they said no. Hardwood says they'll accept the challenge if they admit to using Mark Briscoe to get to them. Sanjay denies that Briscoe denies that as Mark Briscoe makes his way down to the ring. And he got a huge pop from the fans in Detroit. Briscoe tells them to relax. It's become apparent for them to control their emotions. So he talked to Tony Khan and he had some news for double or nothing. He will be the special guest right for the tag team title match between the champs FTR and the challengers Jarrett and lethal so mark starts passing cups around and they start drinking just for dud spit into dax's face as dark was blonde they start to attack cash wheeler and they throw briscoe into hardwood and hardwood hits briscoe with a pile driver to close that segment and if we go backstage we say renee Paquette is with chris jericho and she asks him how he's feeling about being attacked by adam cole last week jericho says he wasn't prepared for a fight and cole created an unsafe work environment and calls him a coward 
So Jericho says he has a court order. It is in the building, arena, or venue. Cole is now inside. Do see one of Adam Cole's best friends, Roderick Strong, steps into the frame and calls Jericho delusional and says Cole is not a coward. Strong says he's not banned from the belt and challenges Jericho to a false count anywhere match for next week. Jericho says Roderick is making a mistake and he accepts the match for next week on Dynamite. Strong says he also got legalization as to Jericho appreciate will be banned from the building next week as well. Jericho is flipping the page and Renee says it has been confirmed. And then we go, Renee is on the other side of the area in front of Tony Khan's office. Trying to go over a mirror, but so we see a returning Thunder Rosa appears and goes to T- TK's office as well. I know Rosa's been doing Spanish commentary, but it's the first time we've seen on TV, I believe, since August. August time around there. I'm not 100% sure there, but it's around there. And then we get a our second of four video packages. This time it's for Sammy Guevara. We can see comments from Jericho and his wife Tate Mello discuss what Guevara's done in his company. And speaking of Tony Khan, he, we since tonight's show is one of the best lines they heard in, in the back. There are source lines looking for a chance to wrestle AEW. So Khan says stay tuned next week on TNT for a huge announcement called one of the most important announcements ever in AEW. I imagine it's probably going to be the collision show, but wait and see. Then our second match of the show. A it, first of two title matches. This is for the international title. The champion Orange Cassie defends against Daniel Garcia. Cassie holds his here. Garcia down on an armbar before they go back for wrist locks. They go back for on the apron until Cassie, Garcia snaps Cassie's tape up hand, knock him to the outside. Cassie takes control and hits dive to Garcia's end of the barricade. Well, I dive off the top rope inside, but Garcia is able to stop Cassie's momentum. So he sends Orange to, to the outside and continues to tap using the barricades to go to pitcher and pitcher. But come back from pitcher and pitcher break. Garcia is in control by hitting the curse stomp. Then he starts dancing around before they hit to the top rope and he hits a superplex. But hangs on, tries to go for something, but Cassie counters into a stunned Doug Millionaire. They start training punches back for Garcia hits Cassie's kneecap and steps on his hand. Garcia stops an orange punch, draw kick to the knee, and then starts hitting Cassie with, with his own lacy. Cassie tries to fight back for Garcia, hits with a power drive that got a two count. Cassie comes back with a beach break with a two count off his own. Garcia blocks an orange punch and then locks in the Dragon Tamer for transition into the cross while stomping on Cassie's hands. They went back and forth training pittance until Cassie got one to stick for the win and to retain the title at 13 minutes and 33 seconds. Fun little mash here. I give this one 6 out of 10. I believe. I think orange is an 11 or 12 power defense. I'm not 100% sure on the number, but that's what it's... I th- it, he's past 10. I know I just can't remember how many exactly. But it was a fun little match, actually. There, I actually thought Ka- that Garcia had won a couple of times, but there was a video from the <clears throat> excuse me, Outcast, who's a Hikoshi, went back to Japan. At the break breaker, a woman shame Jimmy here says their air spirit. He is here in spirit and he sets a true match for next week as the Outcast will show him offense. I'll round down the dynamite card after this review. So Tony Schiavone's ring, he introduces Christian Cage and Lucha Source to come to the ring, and Shivani says that Warlow and Art Anderson isn't here. And asks Christian Cage how they can make himself a challenger for Warlow's TNT title. Christian says that Detroit is literally the worst city in the country and tells him to keep quiet so he could conduct his business. He says it's simple because he is Christian Cage. That's why he gets a TNT title shot. And as, t- as he's trying to talk over the Detroit crowd, he's got like Dominic Castillo heat from these fans. <clears throat> so Cage asked Shivani about all these wrestling AEW and their daddy issues. Cage is just like his previous opponent, Warlow, as a father. And since his father isn't famous, no one cares about him, so he won't waste his breath. He brings up Arn Anderson and just had him to. Arn is looking for a new summon. Summon calls him a liar from, from Brock Anderson to decide and taking all the crap for Warlow. <clears throat> Cage Carnes are the other guy in the tag team with Tolly Blinder and the lap dog for a for question how many times he's won the world title. Cage says he knows the struggles to reach down Mountain Top and ask Warlow what he will do when Real Arn isn't as smart and is cunning as him. He says next week he'll spit in Warlow's face and make him realize his T's days as TNT Chairman are all but over, ending it with Detroit to kiss his ass. To close that, I mean, I thought it wasn't a bad thing. I just went, wish Cage toned it down a little bit. Like, I, I think the promo went on like 10 minutes, it should have cut by five, but it was still a good promo. But well, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if they, it's going to be next week or ramp it, what's going on there, but we'll wait and see. Then we get another th- video package, Pillar Pat. This one's for Darby Allen. We see him skateboarding as his far as looking on. We get words from Sting as well as the highlights of the extreme sport Darby has done. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we go to our third match of the show, a no holds bar match. Anna Jay goes one with the House of Blacks, Julia Hart. Julia makes her way down her and she gets tapped behind by Anna Jay with a chair, and then the bell rings. She, Anna Jay tosses a trash can inside the ring, but got knocked back to the outside by Julia, who sends Anna into the barricade. She grabs a candlestick and starts attacking Anna with it, but Jay snatches away and uses it on Julia. 
Hart takes control of Matt Slammer into the ringside table as we go to pitcher and pitcher break. When we come back from break, there's a stack of chairs on the floor, and Anno slams Julia face first into them before throwing back and top for a two count. Jay puts the trash can on her and hits her with a spin kick in the corner for another two count. Julia places Anna on the top rope, hits her with a suplex under the pile of chairs before she locks her in the heartless for the submission win at 9 minutes and 17 seconds. This was actually a it was a solid no holds bar match. I get I I would give this one six out of ten. And then we go backstage where Napa is with the challenger for the trio's tall best friends at Bandito along with the international champ Orange Cassidy. He said there's enough room in his backpack for three more titles. Renee asks if they choose the final role for the match, but they are confused. They know what to say. So Trent says they're all witches are banned for ringside as Cassie his touch. So the rules for that are there are 20 second countouts, no rope breaks, DQs are in force, and then basically last rule goes to the challenger. But we'll be... So we got that match. This is the open house match. The chamber house black Malachi by Brody Kane, Buddy Matthews, Defense Trimper, Chuck Taylor, best friends, and Bandito. So Malachi and Bandito start the matchup as Malachi holds Bandito down with a knee bar. Bandito reaches for the rope, but there's no rope breaks. The best friends Bandito do some triple team moves on Malachi. But Brody King takes it and goes after Trimper and hits with a senton. Then we go to pitcher and pitcher break. We come back from pitcher and pitcher. Trimper hits a turn of DT and Buddy Matthews. But he can't make the tag, so he finally makes the tag to Bandito. And he goes well on House of Black, including a crucifix bomb on Brody before diving onto the Kings of Black around the floor. Bandito springboards into a knee from Buddy. Then Chuck Taylor enters and goes after Matthews, but he takes out the Brody. And they hit the Dante's Inferno to score the victory and retain the trio's toe at 8 minutes and 13 seconds. This was okay. I actually kind of like how they dimmed the lights for the match. I think this one's 6 out of 10 as well. And we also saw during the match, Orange Kaiser was watching, but we go back to we see Orange Kaiser was laid out. We didn't know who it was. Then we saw somebody light, slowly pick up the title. It is New Japan Pro Wrestling's IWGE tag team and strong open weight tag champs Kyle Fletcher. He has a tag team and holds up the international title. I actually I marked it when I saw that. I, I imagine this is going to be on Rampage or probably Dynamite in the, either next week or the week after, but we'll wait and see. Then we get our final pillar, four pillar package. Video package that is for Jungle Boy Jack Perry. He tells his parents get him a ring for his backyard. How to learn to wrestle. Then we get get comments from Christian Cage, who says that Perry will, can become the AEW World Champion. Then as Galvin runs on the matches for Rampage and Dynamite, which I'll get to after his review. So we get our maven now the Steel Cage match. Kenny Omega goes one on one with Job Moxley. So Omega makes his way down to the ring. Moxley attacks him, and they start brawling on the ramp before Clay Cusino and Willard Yuta come up and help up and start attacking Omega. So the Young Bucks come up for the save. Brian Diaz was on commentary for this match, by the way. Young Bucks toss Yuta off the ramp, and then Nick Jackson tees after Brian Danielson, but Claudio stops that, and he tosses Matt off the ramp before Claudio and Yuta go after him. Nick Jackson gets in Danielson's face before diving onto Claudio and Yuta. So Omega enters the ring, tells Moxley to get in the ring, so they can officially start the match. As Young Bucks and Claudio and Yuta got uh, sent to the back by security. So once Moxley gets in the ring, the match officially starts. With Chaz to Omega hits a Moonsault up the middle rope for a two count. Omega grabs a barbed wire steel chair. From under the ring, tosses in Moxley's face forward, starts tagging it back with the chair, including a diving stump. Moxley comes back with chair shots himself. As we see, Daniels is laughing at it all. Omega takes control and boxes Moxley under the chair, goes to the top of Moxley, stops him, hits him with a superplex. Off top of the chair as we go to pitcher and pitcher that look like that hurt. Then after the commercial break, Moxley has the ring post buckle fish hooked in Omega's mouth before he starts choking him with the ropes. Then he dumps up bag up broken glass, going back to their full gear match in 2019. In the middle of the rainbow, Omega takes control and goes for the one wing angel. Moxley blocks it and puts on a choke ring from the broken glass just for Omega to drop Moxley back first under the glass. Then Moxley gets right back and puts on the choke. They go back forth to Omega, hits in the knee, and both men are laid out. They get up and start training strikes in knee, so Omega connects with the Snap Dragon suplex. He hits the V trigger to Moxley, goes right for the cage. So, and, and Omega, I actually thought he got hurt there because he got his like knee down, got stuck between the ring and the cage. So they're both in, and by the way, in AEW, there's no escape rules, it's pinfall or submission inside the ring. So they're both on the floor. Doc Samson was checking on Moxley. Basically push him aside, sends Omega back inside the ring, grabs a screwdriver, then he gets back inside the ring. Don Cowles runs in and takes a screwdriver away from Moxley. Omega connects with the rip core figure. Rip core feet trigger. 
It's a rip core figure four, almost by accident. And the one wing angel, as the referee is about to hit the three, Don Kels hits Omega in the head with the screwdriver and to the break the count. And then Moxley covers Omega for the win. 14 minutes and 48 seconds. I actually really like this, but this is the fourth time these two faced off. Technically, it is they're both tied again, but I mean, on stage, you don't really count it. So it, Omega does have the win, oh, two wins over him, but. And honestly, I give this one 9 out of 10. I recommend this match. Out of the four, though, I probably said this is my least favorite out of the four, but this was great still. And then after the match, Daniel ends on commentary, says he had no idea what's going to happen, but he's very, very happy. Council, he's trying to hit Omega with a screwdriver again, but he drops it. He whips him into his ear and then basically drops his body down as we that's the show ends. I thought the show was excellent. Actually, one of the best dominates in the last few weeks. Uh, and honestly, my match of the night is the double jeopardy match and the steel cage. That's the two I recommend checking out. I also say no holds bar. Honestly, this whole car wasn't too bad. If I'd say like least favorite match of the night, I'd probably go with the no holds bar match, but they're all still good though. So I'll run down the Saturday. This is on Rampage tomorrow night, not tonight. It's on Saturday. So in trio is actually we got the acclaim Anthony Bones, Max Caster, Team with Billy Gunn goes the Butcher the Blade and Kip Sabian. Tony Storm goes with Allison K. Kyle Fletcher goes with Ashley Andretti. In tag team action, Mogul, Embassy Dash Four Strickland, and one third of the Ring of Honor six main tag team champs. Uh Brian Cage goes against the Dark Order, John Silver, and Alex Reynolds. That is, so that's rampant. And so far for Dynamite made for Wednesday. Chris Jericho first Roger and a Foss Count Anywhere match. And Trio's actually with a woman's shame, Jimmy here, Britt Breaker, and Hikaru Hiroshida. Go against the Outcast of Soraya, Ruby Zoe, and Tony Storm. And Ricky Storms goes well with Jay White. So that was our AEW stuff. And now I will run down the Ring of Honor card. So this is episode 11, 11 matches. So we had in the opening match, Mark Briscoe defeating Shane Terry, 9 minutes 46 seconds. In tag team, our second match of the show, tag team match in Blackpool Combat Cup, Ring of War World Champ, Claudia Castro, and Real Yuta defeating the foundation as Red Ties and Tracy Williams, 8 minutes and 6 seconds. And our third match for the TV title, the champion Samoa Joe defeats Blake Christian to retain a title at 3 minutes 59 seconds. And our fourth match, a tag team match, the Righteous Dutch and Vincent defeat the Infinity, Kylie Bravo and Sean Dean, 4 minutes and 29 seconds. Fifth match, Robert Ryan get defeated for a fix in 2 minutes 56 seconds. And our sixth match in the Battle of the Max, it's Willie Mack defeating Ninja Mack. Match number seven in a non title match. The six man tag champs, the Embassy, Brian Cage, Con, Tolly, Le Leona, defeating Adam Priest, Lucky Ali, and Victor Benjamin in 3 minutes and 19 seconds. Eight, match number eight, Carl Fletcher defeating Tony Devin in 8 minutes and 7 seconds. Match number nine, Air Fox getting the victory over Anthony Henry, 9 minutes and 36 seconds. Our semi main event, match number 10. 10 minutes, we have the Dark Order. Alex Ryan, you know, John Stewart and Stuart Grayson defeating the Trust Busters, GSK, Slim J, Sonny Kissing with Josh Woods, eight, six minutes and four seconds. And then the main event for the Ring of the match 11 for the Ring of Our Women's Tile, Athena of the Chamber Dance against Sky Blue at 14 minutes and 41 seconds. Overall, actually, not a bad episode of Ring of Honor. I give it six out of 10. And honestly, the only matches I recommend check it out are Mark Briscoe for Shane Taylor, Blabble Come for the Foundation, Willie. The Battle of the Max, Willie first Ninja, Kyle Fletcher first Tony Deppin, and the main event. That's that that's easily match of the night. I give that one the women's all seven out of ten. And so far, made for next week on episode 12. The only match made official so far is the fight without honor match. The King of Matt Taven and Mike Bennett versus Action Andre and Darius Martin. So that's our show this week, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Ethan Black. I'll be back next week. Have a good weekend and stay safe. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash wwepodcast. Until then, we'll see you next time. <laughs>